talked a little bit about your feelings about doing this. A little conflicted because I've worked so hard to be in a place in my life where I can love my body and embrace my body. I remember growing up and, you know, this little brown girl in Sydney, Australia and going to ballet class and feeling, feeling like, why couldn't I be tall and skinny and blunt? And so for me to come full circle, to be able to do something where I can take off my clothes comfortably and be comfortable and even empowered in my own skin, you know, I'm like excited and nervous and a lot, of, a lot going on. Can you talk about what your um, style says about you? Everything that I wear means something to me. I feel like everything carries an energy. I don't like to wear things that I know have been man mass manufactured in a third of a country by a child. I feel that energy. Can you take off your hat? What do you feel that people assume about you as a person based on your style? That I'm like hypersexual because I like to show a lot of skin, but I believe that the way I show my skin is like more for me than anybody else. Can you talk about the other things in your life um, that you do where you express your passion? I was getting into a lot of trouble at school, like outside of school as well, and I was 14 and my mom was like, you need to do something productive. But she like found a Latin dance class for me, and after one class I was hooked. It really saved me from that mind maze of what do the other girls think about me? And something about those rhythms and, and that, that beat and like the ecstasy of losing myself in something so primal. There's nothing like being in your body and losing yourself to music. Can you talk about who have been primary influences in your life? My mom. Um, she um, moved to Australia when she was 27 with an 18 month old daughter. and She left everything behind to escape poverty, to escape life as a single mother in a Catholic country and all the shame that was surrounded my birth. She sacrificed her whole life for me. My dad wasn't there. He, he to this day still doesn't want to meet me. I used to pretend it didn't matter, and then now I, I allow myself to feel angry. I write, I email, I do everything, and it's like a brick wall. And it, now I'm like moving through the anger, and I'm getting to the point of being like, wow, you're a really sad person. I feel sorry for you. Can you talk about an insecurity that you've um, had to overcome or still working on overcoming? I'm going to be really brutally honest and acknowledge the fact that I'm scared of getting older and fading. And I'm really aware, like, this is only temporary, this is only temporary, don't get stuck here. Especially in my profession, I see it. I see them, like, grasping at to be a certain age and I really try to try to move into that phase of my life like as gracefully as possible. And I'm at the center of the culture. I'm at the center of the world that like feeds you these messages. Young, beautiful, tight, you know, tan. I, I'm in the middle of that firestorm. And so I have to keep myself very centered to not lose it there. The biggest thing I get, it's changing a lot now, was my ethnicity. And I just couldn't win. I was like too exotic and ethnic to play the girl next door. Sometimes I'd get she's not Latin enough. And so I was like, yeah. you know, I'd be like, oh man, I'm missing out on all the roles, the white girl roles and the Latin girl roles. I'm like, when am I just gonna get the role for the Latin Australian girl? <laughs> If you listen to that, you can get really, you can spin. What's your favorite body part? My dimple. I used to have two, and I lost one kind of along the way. I like it. I like, um, 
I like my smile. I deal with so much rejection in my job. Like for every yes, it's like 100 no's. And that's, that's a really vulnerable place to exist in all the time. That's like going to a job interview every other day, not getting the job. It's like, but it's the kind of job interview where you really put your soul into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was sexual abuse in my life when I was um, pubescent, hitting puberty, and I carried so much of that shame with me throughout my teenage years that I thought it was my fault. And when I was 18, I was on the beach in Peru, secluded beach, no one was around, we had camped there. And in the morning, I woke up, took everything off, and just crawled into the water. And as it washed over me, I had the biggest realization like that it wasn't my fault. And I, ever since then, water has just been this way of cleansing and clearing for me. And I, I'll just never forget that moment in the water on the beach in Peru, in the country that I was born, floating up, looking at God like, thank you, I really needed to know that. Not just know it here, like everything. know it here. It was everything. Knowing it's not your fault is everything. <laughs> But how many of us girls internalize that, whether it's abuse or not, you know? Can you respond to the quote, um, in your body is a good place to be? There's a purpose behind everything. And this body represents all the lessons I have to learn in this lifetime, to walk in this skin. And you know, on social media, there are a lot of young girls out there like, oh, I wish I had da, 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 da. And I always want to make a point to be like, no, 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 no. The reason I'm like this is because I've been through that. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think the being naked thing for me is so important. It's not like I have to move through those that old programming of, oh, you're a show off, you're an exhibitionist. Right. No, it's like a screw you. And that's why I, I, I make a point of like, yeah, like, taking pictures of myself nude or like showing my butt or something. Yeah. It's, it's like a... Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's taken a while. Yeah, it's to radical. Get there. It's radical. It is. <laughs> it's being, it's it's being a revolutionary. Up. Yeah, it is. Thank you. How do you feel now about the experience? I'm just like, thank you. Mm -hmm. This is just such a symbol of how far I've come. And to be able to vocalize some of these things was powerful for me. That was medicine for me. So I feel amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's medicine for us too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. And everyone's stories are just medicine for us.